Well, hello, Stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper, and it's a Saturday. So what the heck is going on? Well, I am very excited because in a couple of hours, I will be going down the 401 to the airport to pick up my love. And then we're going to spend two days with my parents. We're going to see my cousins. Then we're going to travel to Ottawa to see Rachel, and then to Montreal to see Katrina, then back to Ontario and London to see a couple of the kids, and then back home to Chatham before we fly out to Holland. So I realized that I won't be in my studio on Tuesday to do this video for the weekly uh, virtual coffee and a card. So here I am today and I hope that you enjoy this card. It's the last one in the Measure of Love um, card kit. And I have really, really um, enjoyed doing, uh, you know, creating a whole month of cards with the same stamp set because it shows you the value of the stamp set, how much you can do with it. And after you've made four or five cards with a stamp set, you really know the ins and outs of it and your creativity is, is definitely going to be jump started. And I find that sometimes we buy a stamp set and then we don't use it as much as, as we think we're going to. So in this, it, this makes me use the stamp set to its full effect and it will also give you uh, inspiration for your purchase. So that is my goal, to give you more value for your investment in your hobby. So let's go to the card and have a look at what we're doing here. So here's the card and I'm going to show you. You might be wondering where that black and white hound's tooth paper is coming from. And it's kind of hidden in the catalog. It's way in the back on page 171 and it's a host set, which means you can only get it for free. Um, it's worth $24. It's, it's worth $40 and you can get it for $24 of your host dollars. So if you um, either place an order of $200 or you have a workshop and a bunch of your friends get together and your orders total $200 or more, you can get this paper for free. So that's pretty awesome. I love it. And um, I have a nice whack load of it to use in the future. So if you got the kit, then you will have an envelope. And in your envelope is the Whisper White, well, it's not Whisper White anymore, Basic White Card Base. And it is 11 inches by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. Then you have this um, little die cut. And I believe this one came from So Sentimental. I have, I noticed that it's different than the one that I have here. And this one comes from a different stamp set. So there's the mystery. I will explain later where it came from because right now I forget. This is from a punch, a pick a label punch. The ribbon is from the Playful Pets trim combo. And this piece, I believe, is three inches by four inches, but I'm gonna check for you because you want the truth and not a guess. Yes, three inches by four inches. You know, when you've been doing this for 15 years like I have, you can usually look at a piece of paper and guess quite accurately um, what size it is. Like this piece, it's um, embossed with the macrame, I think, embossing folder. It's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So we're going to put that on our card base. Make sure that your fold is in the right side. Trust me, I have assembled cards the wrong way before. It does happen. And so we'll just put our adhesive on first. And you can choose, this often has to be advanced a little bit with your thumb. And then I just go all the way down the edge, I pivot, and then I keep going. And that way you don't have to restart. It works a dream. There we go. It's very good strong adhesive. It sticks to your fingers. So now I just like to, oh, you know what? I think this one was cut at four inches by five and a quarter. That's okay. You just get a bit bigger of a white edge. So now this is gonna be centered right in the middle. You could pop it up if you want, but I didn't. So again, pivot, and then just keep going with that adhesive. And that's just gonna go kind of eyeball it. And when the, the edges look about the same, then you can commit and even then, you know what, sometimes you screw up. It's okay. No one's going to know that it wasn't meant to be that way. So now we're going to take our Measure of Love stamp set. Here we go. And we're going to take the weigh scale. Oh, and guess what I did? Ah, I knew it. I was going to get some um, shimmery white paper to stamp this out. I have everything ready. You could choose to stamp right on here, and maybe I should. I'm going to do that. And then we, you can see the difference because, you know, it's a lot more work to, you can see the little edges in there. It's a lot more work to stamp your way scale and your bowl and then um, put it on there. But it does give a subtle difference. So now you're going to tell me 
whether it's worth the extra work or not. Okay, so let's have a look see. So the weigh scale, just lay it down on your work surface, pick it up with your block, and then, you know what, we'll do the bowl right away too. Um, and you know, the bowl, take a peek at the card again, the bowl is just the outline with um, the little heart stamps. And the bowl is quite, quite a squishy little guy too, so you just want to lay it on your surface and then pick it up with the block. And we'll need the hearts. Again, the skinny little hearts, lay them down on the block. Okay, so now we have those all ready to go. So we'll start with the weigh scale, and we want to get right near the bottom because otherwise there's not going to be room, okay? At least when you cut and, and, and you stamp and cut out your pieces, you can put them where they need to go, but this is, there's no wiggle room here. So I have memento black because we are going to be um, coloring. I'm going to stand up because I want to see there. So give it a one, two, three, four, five stamp there, and then the bowl. And I'm going to do the same thing when I do the bowl because I want it to, um, I'm just going to look to see if I can see any comments. Hi, Catherine. Nice to see you. So give it a little there. And now I'm going to stand again because I don't want to get it wrong here. And it's sitting a little bit off to the side of my weigh scale, but that's okay. I see that my team member, Allison, just drove in. So well, guess what I forgot to put on a block? I forgot to put the, um, I have my chamois here. I'm so organized today. My desk has been cleaned off. So she's coming to pick up some paper. So I'm just going to get the door and let her in, and then she can just watch. Okay? Come on in, Allison. I'm in the middle of a video. Oh, shoot. I thought you put it out. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just a bit late. My mind was having trouble. So there, Allison gets to see me at work. So I forgot to put the cherries on the bowl. And uh, that's okay. So, you know, this is life. She'll be happy to get into air conditioning. It's, it's like 31 or 32 degrees, which isn't horrible. But with the Humidex, it like, feels like, what, 42? So I'm going to use real red. If you look at this card... I used Poppy Parade, and when I put that um, the crystal effects on, it got really neon-y. I don't like that. Not on this card. This card is supposed to have a vintage feel, and with that neon color, it definitely doesn't. So we're going to take real red and see what difference it makes. See, when I make the card slightly different the second time around, it gives you guys something to compare to. So there we go. Oh yeah, that red is looking much better. And then we are going to use the new color, and I, I can never remember if it's so succulent or soft succulent, but it's definitely succulent. It's that lovely shade of green that is also in those beautiful plants that you will kill if you overwater. So apparently you can get some pretty nice looking fake ones. So if that's your bent, go for it. There we go. It helps so much that I have my ink pads behind me and beside me so that if I forget, I can just grab them. Yeah, I've been smart about a few things. So there we go. That looks good. It's looking really good. So all we have to do now is a little bit of pool party for the hearts on the bowl. And then we're going to color our weigh scale. And then we're going to pop it up. Oh, yeah. And I forgot about the saying. Got to do that, too. Oh, goodness. This is definitely an old bowl. Um... Your squirrel probably forgot to clean her hearts. You know, that happens sometimes. Um, yeah. Does it ever happen to you that you forget to clean your stamps and you put them back? And, uh, yeah, then you get a bit of a, a nasty surprise. So, But no one knows that this was supposed to be pool party. So they are just going to think, how do you get that really cool earthy tone? <laughs> we won't tell them, will we? All right. Let's color our waist scale. Oh, yeah, and we have to put the little measuring guy. See, this little thing, you've got to think about where you want to put it because the saying says our friendship tips the scale. So if that little measuring thing is pointing the wrong way, then it doesn't really look like the scale's being tipped very much, is it? So you don't want to send out the wrong message to your friend that, you know, maybe the friendship isn't all that awesome after all. So I don't think they would think that. I'm just being silly. So a little bit of red. I'm going to stand up again to see. There. That looks good. I did something right. Yes. 
All right, now we need the tag. Sorry, Allison, I didn't You're mean fine. to make you wait. But You're fine. She's got the cutest dress on. Oh my word, where'd you find that? Gold Coast. Oh, no more time to shop. It's cruel, it's black and white. Oh man, yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's beautiful. There we go, our friendship tips the scale. You know what, I think Allison should get this card. What do you think? All right. So now we're ready to put this card together, except that I still have to color it. Oh, this is really funny. My, my, my waist, I don't know if it's me. No, it doesn't look that crooked. Sometimes, you know, we just think we have a crooked eye. I think it looks crooked, but it's not. Ah! All right. So we're going to start with the dark pool party, and I'm just going to go into the corners of the way scale like this. I have decided that I love the combination, the color combination of pool party and real red and black. It's um, it's really nice. It's even nice on winter cards. There. See, so now I'm going over it with the light and that automatically blends the colors. When I had my blends class um, earlier this week, people were just amazed because, you know, they think, oh, blends class, blending, that sounds so complicated, but really, it's so easy. And with this great product, it makes you feel so artistic. Yeah, that whole pile in the corner is what's going to haul in next week. Oh, you're getting ready. That's why it's there. You're getting ready. Um, yeah, I'm getting ready. I have stuff in Holland too, but I always find that I still love to have lots of choices. I'm, I'm always like, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. So. We're going to see how much we can cram into Gerard's suitcase because he's coming with suitcases and I cheaped out this time. I'm going with just a um, carry-on because, man, prices went up. Although I did get a bit of a discount because I had to change my dates, which worked out so well. I've got a dark smoky slate here. And so I got 120 bucks back as a credit. Okay, They didn't actually give me money back, but still. Oh, and I have other news for you. So the last time I did a video, it was, I think, on my training group, I was saying about my case of wine that fell out of the car and that, you know, there was, it was like there was a death in the family because the, the wine was running down my driveway, a bottle broke. Thankfully, it was the cheapest bottle that broke. Well, some one of you guys kindly commented that I could bring it back to the liquor store if I could show that the cap was still on. So I was pretty excited about that. I thought, oh my word, this changes everything. Well, guess what? No, 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 not true. That was, I knew it was too good to be true, but um, they said, well, if it was the store's fault, if there was something with, wrong with the bottle or something wrong with the, um, the box, but I truthfully had to say that there was nothing wrong with anything. It was just me because I had the seats down in the back of my car and it's all loaded up with Rachel's stuff. And so it was uneven. And I was, of course, in a bit of a hurry and I had so much stuff to do. And so I just wrenched open the door like not a big deal right but it wasn't sitting level so the whole box just tumbled out more like thank goodness it didn't land on my foot so you know there's always good things and the good thing is is that I wasn't injured and the better thing was that it was the cheap bottle of wine not the expensive one otherwise I might have cried although it probably wouldn't have it wouldn't have helped anyway I might have said a bad word that's probably quite likely I know it's terrible isn't it I know you know when I was younger when the kids were little I was able to I knew I had to be a good example, so I was didn't sin as much. Now, oh my word, sometimes I sound like a sailor. Well, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But I must say, I do not I do use a few more bad words than I used to. I sometimes blame menopause, but really, there's no excuse. So, yeah, I'm trying to work on that. My teacher said um, profanity. Now, it's not profanity. I don't do that. But everybody has a different idea as to what constitutes a bad word. But he said, it's the feeble mind expressing itself forcefully. So I'm trying not to allow my mind to be feeble. All right, last thing. Look how cute this card is and how quickly it came together. So glue dots, give it a shove on the ribbon, pull it off. And I'm doing this and you'll notice I cheated completely, right? Because normally you would thread it through. Oh, and I forgot to show you something too. See if you can see the difference between these two cards. See underneath the bow, it looks a little black on the one. I cheated on that. It's another little trick. Just use your blend. And just kind of, well, I'll show you. And you're just going to, instead of putting a little other dye on there, because that's a lot of work, you can make it look good. I don't have my blend, but I have a marker here because it was, it was more accessible. So you just, oh, goodness. 
This is just kind of go like that. I've kind of got my, oh shoot, I knew this was gonna happen. What's that crap now? All right, well, you know, a squirrel just ran over my card. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more of a whirl. It's hard to do this when you are underneath. This is really funny. Well, whatever. I might have to cover that up with something. It doesn't look good at all, does it? You can see exactly where I screwed up. That was not a, a straight and steady hand, and I swear I have had no wine today. I haven't even had that much excessive coffee, so there, there's simply no excuse at all, except that life happens and I'm not perfect. So the last thing we're gonna do is look at the difference these shimmering crystal effects make. And I have decided that just from looking at this card that it wasn't worth cutting it all out. It works just fine stamping straight onto the paper. Sometimes we think we just have to prove something and oh, um, take a look at what happens when you do this. Uh, sometimes you have to take a good, honest look and say, was it worth the extra five, 10 minutes? And I can tell you only the most observant person would say, oh, look at that, you popped it up. I didn't pop it up, but look, see? Now there's the card with no fussy cutting. And here's the fussy cutting one. Look, you can see the little edge on the way scale. So you determine whether or not you, um, you like that. And I'm looking at my card and I, I didn't blend enough here on this corner. I generally do do a better job. See, just kind of, it's darker now. Is this the dark? Ah, yeah, I use the dark. Oh my word, that was not, that did not help at all. All right, thing is when you're doing blends, Always have your color lifter close at hand and look at your blend before you start coloring. All right, I did not improve that card at all by doing that, but maybe I gave you a little bit of a laugh. Just make sure that after you put the crystal effects on your card, put your card well out of the way so that it dries, okay? I was gonna show you some more cool stuff because I got these great Christmas products in, but you know what? We can't do everything in one day, so you will have to join me next week and see what other good things I have to show you. Leave me a comment. If you're following on YouTube, make sure you click the little bell button. And that means that you will subscribe and you'll get notifications. And if you guys leave comments underneath, that also helps YouTube to, um, you know, let people know that, hey, this girl actually has some fun things to share. And so if you guys like and comment and do the thumbs up, then YouTube sees that and then more people will see my stuff. So together we'll build this community and I am dreaming of amazing things happening and you guys are going to be a part of it. So hold on to your hats and uh, get ready for a fun ride. All right, guys, have a super day.